Okay, so can you please start with your name, your age, and how long you've been diving for? My name is Lara. I'm 37, and I've been diving for um, I've been diving for like 20 years. So have you been trained in any efforts in uh, coral conservation and preservation? I have, yeah. So can you go over those, please? Sure. Um, so I've been to Curacao, where they have a coral conservation project. And I was there for a little while volunteering, and then I was also in the Philippines where they also have a marine institute. And they do a little bit of coral conservation, but they also study like how the animals move and where they've been and that kind of thing. You know, like what they do. What they do specifically? They yeah. have a, a ton of areas that they work on. Um, they do a little bit of coral, but they also do a lot of like tagging the animals and following. Part of a group of women who has have different projects around the world. Some of them are about coral, some of them are about sharks, and they do documentaries. Um, others work with uh, the sunfish. Like there's different people that do different things, and we all just get together once a month and like talk about what we've been doing and what the progress is and what everything happens in each country. So it's, it's really interesting uh, because you get to listen to and talk to about different. So what do you do? Well, I was working with sea lions in Uruguay. Okay. Yeah. So there's a big island with a population of many, many hundreds of sea lions. And people go there for snorkeling and they go for scuba diving. And what we were doing is basically we were monitoring how the population was growing and if they were reproducing and how fast they were doing it and if there were any changes in the population. Cool. Okay, so have you noticed like a big change in the coral colonies uh, over the years that you've been diving? Well, since I've been diving, I feel like I've been to different places diving, so it's hard to keep track of one thing that's happening. But I know that there has been a lot of bleaching in the past few years because of changes in temperature and changes in pH and in water and everything that we're doing to the earth. And it's really messing up the oceans and messing up the temperatures. And all of that affects coral um, There's also been really big storms, and those storms also they break off pieces and they destroy a big part of the coral reefs. And all of that is has a lot to do with what we have done to the earth and how we're treating it. Are there like have you noticed uh, tour tourists often making coral reefs worse, and sort of you see them often breaching for the coral and. How big of an impact does like your average diver have sort of on um, coral reefs? So it depends on what your average diver dives like. Okay, so yeah. I've seen really great divers who have a few dives or a ton of dives, it doesn't really matter, but that are conscious and that are aware of their body position and try to keep away from the coral. The hard coral doesn't get as badly broken or as badly maimed as some of the soft coral or the Gorgonian fans, all of that soft coral that's just kind of floating in the water. Yeah, yeah. That gets beaten up a lot more, especially by diver fins. And it happens a lot. You see it and people who have poor diving skills and just don't care and they have a bunch of things dangling from them and they haven't really tucked everything in, they're not streamlined and then they're dragging their SPG or they're dragging their Octo and that also ruins the corals. Okay, Are there any specific pollutants that um, really damage the corals? Uh, so I was in Maldives and they said like sunscreen really really damages the corals. So is there anything else that you've noticed that really messes them up? Everything that we throw into the water that is not supposed to be there uh, has an effect. It may be a small effect, it may be a ripple effect, it depends on how much, but every toxic waste that we throw in, even when we're doing just like boat cleanups and they put bleach on the boats, all of that, detergent, anything that we put into the ocean that isn't meant to be there is going to have an effect and it's going to impact populations. So honestly, if it's not natural, it shouldn't be in the and what efforts do you think can be made to sort of reduce um, bleaching and sort of help the coral? Well, for starters, we could have a better waste disposal system globally. 
um, even after the pandemic, the biggest pollution in the ocean is now masks and gloves, uh, face masks. So everything that we do has an effect. And as everything that we do has a negative effect, things that we do can also have positive impact. So recycling and making sure that the waste management and the waste treatment is the correct way to do things and try to be as bioconscious as possible. You know, recycle everything that you can, including clothes. Everything goes back into the ocean at some point, somehow, which is why we have so many problems with microplastics. And they've now found microplastics in our blood from eating fish and crustacean. Um, so everything's cyclical here, and it feels that we're not taking care of the earth, and by not taking care of the earth, we're not taking care of ourselves. So any kind of reduction that we can do to minimize the impact is beneficial in the long term.